So up until now, we've been working with real life relations. But of course, this is math class. And we are going to move into the theoretical. Because the reason we study math is to use it to prove theoretical things. Math has its use in the real world. But many of the uses of math in the real world come from math being used to prove or test a theory. Which means knowing how math works is just as important as being able to apply it to something in real life. Sadly, we do not live in an era that values knowledge for the sake of knowledge. But what are you going to do? So, here we have, instead of cost versus DVDs, or wind speed versus temperature, or percent of oxygen in the air versus altitude, which are all real life situations, we have a math situation. Because all of those three real life situations I just gave you can be modeled with math. Because math is used to explain the real world, not the other way around. Okay? Okay. So what do I have here? A little tough to see because I used yellow and it's this late in the afternoon. But what are those five numbers? Don't read to me the numbers. They are independent variables. Excellent. What else can we call them? Sam? Sure, they are x values. Excellent. What else can we call them, Michael? Inter they are absolutely integers. Good job. Inputs. Everybody cool? All right. How do I find the output? Clayton. I apply math to the input to get an output. Where do I find the math to apply? Clayton. It's in the expression, which is right there. So what am I going to do with every single input. I'm going to input it. So, my input is negative 2. I know that you know this answer right away in your heads. But I don't care, because we're going to write it out anyway. 5 minus what? Negative 2, which is what? What? 7. What then is the point that I can put on my graph? Negative 2, 7. That's the point for the graph. Agreed? Now, what's the next input? Negative 1. So that's going to be 5 minus minus 1, which is going to be 6. six. What's the point on the graph? Negative 1, 6. Now, is this a linear equation? Do we know yet? No, we do not know yet. What do we need to prove it's linear? We don't have to complete the whole table. How far do we have to go to prove it's linear? 3. Because any two points could be joined by this, couldn't it? Is that linear? No. But once I have a third point, I know I'm linear. What's the next one? Zero. Five minus zero equals five. Now, I'm going up by one, and I'm going up by one. So one, two, or sorry, down by one, four, three. Right? What are the points? 
zero five one four two three and then we graph it zero five negative one six one four negative two seven four five six seven negative one six zero five one four two three and I helped you out because we were having so much trouble with it yesterday any value for X now the question becomes, how many of you feel you needed this reminder here? A couple of you. Do you understand what that reminder is saying? Can I put any number in for x and subtract that number from 5? I can, can't I? 0.1, okay, 4.9. 0.7, okay, 4.3. 21, okay, negative 16. Any number. That is why we can connect the line, okay? Now, what if it was cans of pop? Could I connect the line? No, because I can only put in whole cans of pop. Do you understand? Okay. So this line we will connect. Now let me give you a little warning here. If it's real life it's often discrete which means you can't always fill the line. If it's math, it's often continuous, which means you do continuous. Discrete, no, continuous, yes, for a line. Okay? Almost always. Can I give you exceptions to both of those? Yes. For example, we did one yesterday, going up the side of the building, right? Each floor, solid, single whole numbers. But you didn't teleport floor to floor, right? DVDs, however, not solid numbers, because you can't have anything less, anything else but whole DVDs. Everybody good? Okay. You guys do that one. Just the first one. Just number one. Take about a minute. Maybe a little longer. All right. So this one was 4 times 1 minus 2, which is 2. So the point on the graph, you have it there. 4 times 2 minus 2 is 6. And then we graph it. Negative 1, pot negative 6. This is tricky. Why? What makes this graph weird to work with? 
plate. Right. Keep your eye on that because it's two squares. And what is it going the other way? One square equals two, right? Two, four, six. You've got to keep your eye on that. So a negative one, negative six, zero, negative two, one, two, and two, six. Math or real life? Discrete. Or continuous? Line or dots? Line. Why? Sam. Any number can be multiplied by 4 and have 2 subtracted from it and still get a value. Okay. Okay. That makes a guy happy. Uh, I am indeed. What is that point right there? Wait. Negative one half, negative four. That negative one half is an X, right? That negative four is a Y, right? If we drew a good line, what does that mean that point should do with that equation? Sam? It should work, does it? What's four times negative a half? Negative two, what's negative two minus two? Negative four, are we right? Of course we are, why? Because we're good at math. Okay, remember this in, in two days, okay? Well, remember it forever, but specifically remember it in two days from now. And nobody do the stupid two days from now Saturday <laughs> joke, Mr. Myers, because no Amshman was thinking of it. <laughs> Never heard that one. All right. Do the next one. There's some trickery in it, some jiggery pokery. Some fiddle faddle, some bric a brac. No, do do the 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 stuff. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. All right, is my data that I have graphed right now? Would you agree with that statement? Play grade nine lawyer ball. Have I graphed the data that I have? Yes. Do I, have I yet decided if my graph is complete? No, I have not. The next question will explain it. What did you write here? Sam? So based on our specific data 
and Sam's experience, he feels that I would not join the points. Because although there are indeed fractions of hours that you are indeed able to bowl, he feels, much like a pizza topping, for example, you are being charged for it. Do you all agree? So you all agree that you should not join the point. Everyone is happy with that. Okay. What if I told you that you pay like your cell phone? You are billed by the second. Would you join the point? Yes or no? You would. If you are billed by the second, are you technically continuous? Or are you technically discrete? The key word there is technically. Of course you are discrete. Why? We don't measure lower than seconds, do we? But if we were to put this on as seconds, we would have to have a dot every 3,600 of each hour, yes? I would have to have dot, 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 3,600 times between one and two. What would that result in? No. What would it result in the graph looking like? A straight line, right? You guys have all seen that art where it's just dot 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 dot. Yes, it is pontalism. Good. Pontalism, but that's beside the point because it's French. It's actually point. But pointalism is what us Canadian and Anglo's say. Um. So. Sam says no because you're paying by the hour. One sec, I'm just finishing writing. Because you're paying by the hour. I would say possibly depending on the bowling alley. Agreed? Because if you don't join them and you bowl for one and a half hours, you're going to pay what? There's no output at one and a half, right? So what are you going to pay? Hmm? You're going to pay for two hours, right? Because there's no output. But what if the bowling alley dude says, no, 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 no. You only pay for what you bowl. Now if I bowl for one and a half hours, do I have an output? And what would I be paying? About 45. Does everybody see the difference? It just depends, right? Are you going to need diapers when you're old? Yeah. It depends. <laughs> old person diapers are called depends. Yeah. You didn't. Sometimes when old people get old, they lose control of their poop and pee. So they go back onto diapers. But they don't call them diapers. Well, that's the name brand. Depends. They're actually, they have another name. I don't know what they are. But I said a joke, Amshuman. Are you going to need diapers when you get old? It depends. It depends. Because old person diapers are called depends. All right. Is it a linear relation? 
There's no line. Yes, it still is. Why? Yes. Because the change in IV always results in a constant change to DV. You don't want to say it's the same because it's not necessarily over one, up one, right? Now, this is where it gets tricky. What am I asking you to do with that next question? Am I asking you to describe the pattern in reality or am I asking you how to describe what it looks like on the graph? Read the question. Sam says it's on the graph. You're going with the graph? Okay, so describe this to me. What, what, what's the pattern? When H increases by one, increases by 10. So if that was on the graph, it would look like this. When H increases by one, C increases by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Is that what it looks like? No. So what am I asking with that question? Real life. This is life. I'll talk about that in a second. What is it going to be? What is our equation? 10H plus 30. Because of our chart, plus 10, plus 10, plus 10. So I must be multiplying H by 10, yes? So this has to be, cost has to at least equal 10H. But 10 times one is 10, I gotta get it to 40, so I gotta add in that extra 30, right? Now, what is it on the graph? I go right, two, and up, one. Be aware that the graph is different than real life. Okay? Two meant an increase of one. One square meant an increase of ten dollars. Okay? Okay, it is 10 to 2. You guys are here till 225. A little later than that, but you always take the last five minutes off. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to give you the rest of the period to do page 170. Please notice you have a quiz coming up. Please notice that when you lie to me tomorrow and said you were able to do all of these, like you lied to me in this one, I will be taking quiz questions from the stuff you already tell me you know how to do. So come quiz time on Monday or Tuesday, there will be no, I really didn't know how to do that, Mr. Myers. Because of course, tomorrow I'm going to ask, did anybody have any problems with this? And Monday, I'm going to ask, did anybody have any problems with this? And you're all going to say, no, Mr. Myers. Which means, of course, this will be 100% of you will be getting 100%. Right? Right. Right. I have a test of yours that I am marking right now. It is not quite done. I wanted to wait to mark it until everybody's was in. The poly, no, the algebra. equations and algebra test. Okay, the mark, the mark, yes, and I gave it back to you. Oh, yeah. And I made changes. Oh, yeah, I that. Now, that being said, I'm glad you bring that up because you can see 
right here where the dot, the pink dot is, we have done a unit on polynomials, which was factoring, and we have done a unit on algebra. That is two units, yes? Which means it's time for another cumulative exam. Oh my good gravy. Next week is the last week before Christmas. Would I start something new and get cut off halfway? Of course not. How many days are next week? Five. Good gravy, Mr. Myers. How can you be that good at the calendar? One, tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm just saying, there's not going to be anything new next week. We're going to be filling it up with finishing this unit, cumulative exams, things like that. Okay? <coughs> because really, this doesn't need to take a whole day. No, it doesn't. I don't know. Should you? It's up to you. Yep. <laughs>